We have an amazing speaker. Um, Miss Nancy is going to introduce him. Uh, Dr. Lemons here to uh, to share his story with us today. Um, but uh, as he is sharing his story, and as you're sitting there thinking about your own resiliency and your four dimensions of wellness, I want you to be thinking about where you are on a scale of one to ten. One being, I'm about to hurt myself, and ten being. Life is great. It could not get any better. So in your four dimensions of wellness, just overall, where are you on a one to ten? All right. I am very pleased to announce our guest speaker today is Dr. Robert Lemon. He's a renowned speaker, a film producer, an author, and a TV personality who has risen to prominence by delivering a high-energy message that inspires people to take responsibility for their lives and live up to their greatness. His profound presentations draw from his academic and professional achievements from the United States Air Force, corporate experience, and from the United States Postal Service, and as a CEO of Believe Your Dreams. He's author to Now Is Your Time and co-author to the best-selling book, Multiple Streams of Inspiration, with Jack Canfield, author of Chicken Soup for the Soul. It is with great pleasure to introduce Dr. Robert Lemon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I do appreciate this opportunity, and thank you, Nancy. Thank you, General Schaefer, and thank you, Ed Edwards, for inviting me, giving me the opportunity to share a portion of my story. From 1980 to 1984, I've learned that it was not only my accountability and my responsibility, but I was defending my country, boys, men, women, and girls. And in my community last week, I brought people from all across the country, about 500 people a night, so that they could entertain and speak to people who are paralyzed, people who are, are, are blind, people who are veterans, people in the community who are at risk, who don't earn 40 and 50 and 60 thousand dollars a year. Because what I understand is service is the price you pay for the space you occupy. As I spoke to Miss Nancy this morning, I told her, I said, Miss Nancy, I still grieve because I really don't understand what it's like not to have both parents. But I found in my grieving that my mother would want me to do what I'm doing here today. And not only would my dad and my mother want it, I think the creator is pleased with what I'm doing here today. I shared with her. In creating my book, I wrote the book in 2011. Organizations are purchasing the book, colleges, community. And I said, the reason why I wrote the book is because what I understood was that we always need to take time, just a little bit of time, to have coffee with somebody that we love. Because my mother each and every day from 2005 could not move not one limb. And I would pick her up and I would turn her over. And there were times where the CNA was late and I would have to take my mother's pampers and, and, and take my mother and, and keep her clean, bathe my mother. And I said, Mom, listen, you brought me in this world and I'm going to make sure you're taken care of until you go out. And the last thing I told Ms. Nancy was that I would go cook her breakfast and I walked to the bed. And what I would do, I would make sure I sat down. And I told my mom, here's your coffee. Because when I made that hot cup of coffee, I couldn't get up and walk away. It's too hot to drink right away. And the aroma of that coffee, hazelnut, gave us time to have conversation. Being resilient is not just about me, but mom, how are you doing today? I was my mother's keeper. Any family, friend, or foe that wants to talk to me and hold the conversation it has to be at a table over a cup of coffee because what I'm going to ask you is not to give me any accolades or praise, not to give me any brownie points. I'm going to say, how are you doing? Because I am my brother's keeper. And if there's anything that's going wrong in your life, you have to understand that you got to be resilient, that I am here for you and I want you to be here for me. And I'm taking this opportunity to thank you all for coming to this presentation this morning. And I pray that I've said something that has made a real difference in your life. And if I get the opportunity to have that cup of coffee, as Miss Nancy will tell you, I'm going to ask you, how are you doing? 
Because this morning, I didn't think Miss Nancy was going to make it. She said, I'll pick you up at 7.30. I said, do you have to be so early? She said, what time we get there? She says, 10 o'clock. So we get there. I'm having that cup of coffee. And Miss Nancy says, time to go, Robert. We got to get over. I said, are we late? She said, no, it's 8.45. I said, what time do we have to be there? She says, 10 a.m. But I'm saying, Miss Nancy, come on back. We're going to sit down. Let me have another cup of coffee with you because I want you to understand that that is not as important as me calming you down because she was going 150 miles an hour. <laughs> she was trying to tell me all the great things that's going on in the base. I said, Miss Nancy, I got all day. I said, not only do I have all day, but after this thing is over, I think uh, General Schaefer, he's going to be pretty pleased. Because I want you to understand this is not my first rodeo. And this is not my first time being around my favorite group of service men and women. And this is not my, favorite, my first time sharing all of my stories. And I just want her to know that before I leave, take me by Starbucks. And I'm serious about it. I'm serious about heart attack. I passed by Starbucks and I was shaking. Let me get Starbucks. But she said, I got to get you there. I got to get you there. And I said, no problem. I'm going to let you get me there. And I told the camera guy, don't worry. She's really turned up. <laughs> But that's some good energy. See, it's not how did he die or how did she live. Now, what did he gain or what did she give? These are the measures to measure the worth of a man or a woman regardless of birth. Now, what was your station? Or how is your heart? But how are you going to play your God-given part? <laughs> let me mention, thank you for serving the country, John. A huge thank you to Dr. Lemon for sharing his uh, story with us today. Um, it's, uh, it always has me reflect when, when I listen to, uh, to motivational speakers that really, despite where you start out in life, when you have goals and people that help hold you accountable, you can reach literally any height, anything that you want to do, especially living in this great country. And, and the tie-in for me today, as I, as I look out, at this uh, amazing crowd, is that by serving your country, by being part of this special team that gets to serve your nation, you're empowering Dr. Lemon to achieve his, his dreams. So he served and got to go on further, but, but the folks that will never get to thank you that are across this nation, um, he gets to represent because right now, your service empowers them to be able to achieve their dreams. And that's what living in a free country is all about. Thank you, guys. Thanks for all you do. God bless the test wing. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We just had Dr. Lemon, Robert Lemon, speak at our Wingman Day here at Edwards Air Force Base, and he was fabulous. He rocked the house. Um, if any of you other community support coordinators out there are interested, you will not go wrong by inviting Dr. Robert Lemon to your Wingman Day. <laughs>